in this video i explained types of gear train so there are basic four type of gear train is available first one is simple gear train second is compound gear train third riveted gear train fourth epicyclic gear train now we understand all the types of gear train in a detail so first one is a simple gear train so from the name we can understand it is a simple type and in a simple type simple gear train in a one shaft only one gear is installed in a compound gear train in a one shaft two gear are installed so there is a slight difference in all the types of gear train so in a simple gear train series of gear are mounted on a different shaft in this diagram we see that here the four gear are there so it is called as a series of gear and these gear are mounted on a different shaft means for a gear a shaft a is used for gear b shaft b is used for gear c shaft c is used for gear d shaft d is used means for every gear different shaft is used between the driving and driven shaft so this a is a driving shaft b is a driven shaft between the driving and driven shaft there is a each shaft means shaft b and shaft c carrying only one gear so here we see you know on a shaft b gear b is mounted on a shaft c gear c is mounted consider a is the driving gear so this is a driving gear b is the driven gear and this b and c is the intermediate gear as shown in a figure so what is the basic fundamental of simple gear train on a one shaft only one gear is mounted it is called as the simple gear trains the intermediate gears so intermediate gear means gear b and c change the direction of rotation of a driven gear so this is a driving gear and this is a driven gears so what is the rotation means what is the directions of the driven gear it is depend on the number of intermediate gear so these intermediate gears are change the direction of the driven gear that's why it is also called as the idler gear so direction of the driven gear is depend either the odd numbers of intermediate gear are there or a even number of intermediate gears are there so in this first image we see that this is a driving gear this is a driven gears so driver gear is rotated clockwise driven gear is rotated anti clockwise means driver and driven gears are rotated opposite to each others now when we put one more gears between the driver and driven that is called as the intermediate gears so here the odd numbers are gear rotated means between driving and driven we only add the one gear odd number means suppose we add the three gears five gear seven gear nine gears these are the odd numbers of gears so here what happen the driving and driven gears are rotated in a same direction so first driving gear is rotated clockwise then idler gear is rotated in a anti clockwise direction then this driven gear is rotated in a clockwise directions so driving and driven gears are rotated in a same direction when the odd numbers of gears are there when the number of intermediate gears are even means two intermediate gears are there either four six eight intermediate gear are there then what happen the driven gear rotate opposite directions of the driving gear so here we see that driving gear rotated clockwise then this gear rotated anti clockwise and this is rotated clockwise and this is anti clockwise so both driving and driven are rotated in a opposite directions when the even numbers of gear are there driving and given gears are rotated in a same directions when the odd number of gears are there now before moving ahead to the compound gear train i will request to like the videos and subscribe my channels for watching the more video related to basic mechanical engineering or other subject of mechanical engineering for bme subject various link is provided in descriptions as well as in car for other subject i request to visit the playlist now second is the compound gear train when center distance between the two shaft is small so in a last image here we see that here only the 
this is the center distance between the driving gears and driven gears so here what happened the distance is increased between the driving and driven gears now if we want to reduce the center distance between the driving and driven gears means we need to install the gear train in a small space at that time we need to use the compound gear train so when center distance between the two shaft is small and high velocity ratio is required the simple gear train become practically impossible so in this case we need to use the compound gear trains for a shorter distance or for a small space we need to use the compound gear trains now what is difference between the simple gear trains and compound gear trains so in a simple gear train we study that in a one shaft only one gears are installed so in a compound gear train what happens so in a compound gear train the intermediate shaft carry two gears which are rigidly mounted on a shaft so in this diagram we see that this is the driving gear a this is shaft so here we see only one gears are there this b and c are intermediate gears so they are mount on a one shaft and this is the driven gear and this is a driven shaft so intermediate shaft carry the two or more gear than it is called as the compound gear trains consider a is the driving gear b is the driven gear b and c key to the intermediate shaft as shown in a figure so this is intermediate shaft and on a one shaft the two gears are mounted then it is called as the compound gear trains now here you see the other diagrams here the two intermediate shaft are there and on a one intermediate gears the sorry you know one intermediate shaft the two intermediate gears are there so it is called as the compound gears and the on a second shaft only one gears are there okay so it is possible that the number of intermediate shaft are there and on a one shaft the two gear are there then it is called as compound gear and on the second intermediate shaft only one gear are there then it is called as the idler gears the gear b and c are called as the compound gear so these b and c gears are called as the compound gear the gear b and c are mounted on the same shaft and they rotated at the same speed so here we see the size of these two gears are different but they are mount on the same shaft that's why their speed are same now third one is riveted gear train so in this gear train first and last gear are on the same axis as shown in a figure here we see that this is a driving shaft this is the intermediate shaft and intermediate gears and this is the driven shaft and driven gears so here what we see the axis of this driving and driven gears are same so they are mounted or installed on such a way that axis is same so in the last two cases what we see the axis is not same here we see that it is the driving gear and driving gear axis is here this is the driven gears and driven gear axis is here so axis is not in a one line but in a riveted gear trains the first and last gears are on the same axis means driving and driven gear have a same axis so this is the axis in our case this is the second diagram so one is the input gear two and three is the compound gear and fourth one is the output gears okay so here we see that input and output gear have a same axis so here we see this is the gear 1 so it is input gear this bigger gear is the outer gear 4 now where this riveted gear is used the back gear arrangement in a lathe machine is the riveted gear train so it is used in a lathe machine and it is used to reduce the spindle speed for reduce reduction of the spindle speed we need to use the riveted gear train in a lathe machine apart from that it have a further number of applications and last gear train is the epicyclic gear train in simple and compound gear train gear wheel are rotated about a fixed axis so in all the three cases we see that the gear is rotated on the same axis while in epicyclic gear train the axis of rotation of the wheel are not fixed at all so simple epicyclic gear train is shown in a figure now here we see that this is the various diagrams of the epicyclic gear trains so in epicyclic gear train main part is this arm this is the arm a and one at the one end of the arm 
a one gear it is called as the fixed gear this is the g1 is mounted and another end of the arm it is called as the o2 and around that gear 2 is mounted or it is called as the gear g2 so here we see that this green color portion is our arm and this is the o1 so o1 here the gear 1 is mounted so this center gear is also called as the sun gears so our planet have a sun and some another planets are there so sun is rotated at its centers and up from the center some other planets are moving so this center gear is called as the sun gears and this blue color gear that is called gear g2 it is called as the planet gears so in epicyclic gear trains the number of planet gears are also available so in this diagram we see that only one planet gears are there so in some case the three or four planet gears are also used so here we see that outer gear are not that it is called as the ring gears so in the second image here we see that this part is called as the ring gears the gear g1 and g2 are mounted on each end of the arm a so this is the arm a so at the one end of the arm a g1 gear is mounted and it have the fixed axis and this is the o2 point this is another end of the arm where the g2 gear is mounted and it have a different axis they are not rotated on the fixed axis epicyclic gear train are frequently used where large speed reduction is required with limited space means in a limited space where we require the larger speed reductions at that time we use the epicyclic gear trains they are used in motor cars and other vehicles so here we complete all the four types of gear trains so thank you for watching this video if you learn something then like the videos subscribe my channels for watching the more videos and don't forget to share with your friends